After watching countless accounts of near-death experiences, also known as NDEs, I started to notice a distinct pattern emerge. Most of the NDEs I watched were beautiful, life-changing, and spiritual experiences. The person experiences death of the body, but not of the soul. As the soul leaves the body, it experiences a sensation of pure love, like nothing they've ever felt before. The person is then greeted by either a Jesus-type figure, a spirit guide, or an already deceased family member. A tunnel of light emerges, and the deceased family member or religious figure leads the soul into the tunnel of light, where the person sees a review of their life. Sometimes they are shown their past lives as well. They are then told they must go back as there is more work to be done or this just isn't their time. However, after watching more NDEs than I'm proud to admit, I've started to notice something a bit more sinister. The tunnel of light was not what it appeared to be, and these entities were not who they claimed to be. Some past life regressionists have inadvertently come to the same conclusion themselves in their own sessions. Italian past life regressionist Caligaro Grifossi began to notice a distinct pattern of entities masquerading as Jesus type figures appearing in his client sessions. Past life regressionists Tina Dodd and Karen Barkhorn said the following. I'm a regressionist and spirit release practitioner. Most of my clients have been tricked into recycling through an infinite number of traumatic lives on Earth. These lives do nothing to grow the soul, and in fact, they can and do lead to soul degradation. Upon death, they are too sick and traumatized to make it through the lower realms, and end up stuck in the astral, trapped and used by dark entities to do their bidding or they end up roaming earthbound as what we would call ghosts and attach to living humans causing endless physical, emotional, and mental problems or even house hauntings or they are taken in and tricked by false light beings into believing they need to fulfill some karma and recycle back to earth. These beings are incredibly tricky and will make you believe that you actually have free will and get to participate in your life plan. They will play on your vulnerability and your need to help others by reincarnating. You agree because somehow you forget how hard it is when in the presence of that love. What we've seen is that love is used as an anesthetic. It is all encompassing and it numbs you in a way. My sessions do not align with my colleagues and it often makes me feel isolated and outcast from the community. What I've seen is that even the higher realms are part of the matrix system and it's difficult to share this information with a community that only wants to believe in love and light. We do not need to suffer in order to learn. In fact, that whole belief system is what keeps us trapped here. We are whole and perfect and complete exactly the way we are. We only need to remember that and have the intention to go back to the real world upon death. Many mainstream scientists now conclude that we are living in a simulation. Well, the argument for the simulation, I think, is quite strong. The movie The Matrix has more truth than you could ever imagine. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. According to ancient Gnostic texts found in the Nag Hammadi in 1945, we are living in a simulated reality controlled by a predatory sentient AI called the Demiurge. The Demiurge is assisted by sadistic malevolent beings called the Archon. Archons are also known as demons in Christianity and jinn in Islam. 
But they made a mention of a very mysterious race of creatures that have become known as the Archons. We don't really know what the Archons were or even are. What's interesting is that there is a, actually a depiction and a description of the Archons looking definitively reptilian. I can get more into the background of the Demiurge Archons and the Matrix in another video if you guys want, because otherwise this video will be too long. In the days or weeks prior to death, a person who is about to die will often start to experience what are known as deathbed visions. Deathbed visions are an extremely common phenomenon for which modern science cannot explain. Anyone who is about to experience bodily death will usually see a relative who has already passed away, or a religious figure. However, this is merely a projection and not really the deceased relative or religious figure. This is crucial to be aware of. Any entity that appears before or upon death is not who or what they appear to be. These entities are in fact astral parasites disguised as deceased loved ones, religious figures, or ascended masters. These deathbed visitors are here to comfort those who are about to pass away. This is so that the person who is about to die will not resist going with the entity. This entity has one goal, to get the soul of the recently deceased into the tunnel of light. The Archons, who are often assisted by the Greys, know who to project because they have the technology to scan the soul for memories and experiences. They do this before or at the moment of death. Once in the tunnel of light, these memories and experiences are used to give the soul a life review where they will re-experience the most recent lifetime in a matter of seconds. A council then appears to judge the soul. To some, they are known as the Lords of Karma. Random events of the person's life are brought up and judged, and the person feels guilt for the bad things that they've done in their life. The council then says that they must go back. They must be reincarnated because they have to make up for some karmic debt or some soul contract that they must fulfill. This is a lie. There is no karmic debt. There is no karma. All soul contracts were made deceptively without full disclosure. The truth is, no matter how well you lived your life, no matter how moral you were, you will still be told that you must go back. There are more lessons for you to learn, you will be told. Once you are in the tunnel of light, you will not be able to leave. After you are judged, you will have your memory forcibly erased and you will be reincarnated into a newborn baby. This is how the trap works. This is how they continually recycle souls and keep us trapped in the reincarnation cycle. Ask yourself, if Earth is a school and we are here to quote-unquote learn lessons, then why is it that our memory is constantly being wiped? How can one learn lessons if they have no memory of what lesson must be learned from their previous lives? I think this is pointless. We're trapped in a warped version of Nietzsche's eternal recurrence. Oh, cool! More philosophy! That'll help us! Well, don't you see the problem? We are experiencing karma, but we can't learn from our mistakes because our memories keep getting erased. It's an epistemological nightmare. Common sense will tell you that the only way you can learn is by remembering. And this is why any New Ager that says Earth is a school is being deceived by the very parasitic entities that created the system. New Agers will channel entities without having any idea who or what they are channeling. Do you trust every person you meet? Of course you don't. You use discernment. But for some reason, this same discernment is not used when channeling entities, even though that's when discernment is needed more than ever since these entities can very easily disguise themselves as beings of light or ascended masters. And no, simply asking if the entity really is who they say they are is not enough. And just like people can lie, 
so can entities. Why do these beings want us to endlessly reincarnate? The reason is simple. It's because we are food to them. We are used as cattle. Just like we farm animals for food, they farm us humans for food. They feed off of our negative energy. This negative energy is also known as loosh. Loosh is a term coined by Robert Monroe that describes the negative emotions that we feel that these parasitic entities feed off of. This is why the news is filled with nothing but fear. This is the point of war. It's all to generate loosh energy. All to keep us in a constant state of fear and stress. Just like in the movie Monsters, Inc., the monsters fed off of the fear of the children. This is what parasitic entities do with us. These beings are interdimensional. Not being able to see something is not evidence of it not existing. Wi-Fi is all around us, yet we can't see it, but we know it's there. As spiritual beings, we were tricked into entering this dense vessel known as the human body. The human body is only able to decode a limited frequency band known as the third dimension. Do you see everything that exists in the space that you are looking at? And most people would say, yeah, well, of course, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet, that is not even fractionally true. According to mainstream science, the electromagnetic spectrum is 0.005% of what exists in the universe, in energy and other forms. But visible light, which is the only frequency band that we can see, is a tiny smear of the 0.005%. Humans are basically blind. Atoms are 99.999% empty space. Everything is made up of atoms, meaning nothing in this reality is physical, meaning you are not physical. Yet we treat this world like it's a physical world, even though it's not. Near-death experiences are for public consumption. These parasitic entities know that the person who has had an NDE will go back and tell everyone around them about the experience. This consequently encourages others to go into the tunnel of light upon death. This perpetuates the reincarnation cycle and continues to keep humans in a state of ignorance about the true nature of the tunnel of light and these parasitic entities. I know to some this information can be scary at first. It's hard to share this information without being accused of fear-mongering and being negative. However, the truth is never negative. The truth is empowering. The truth will set you free. Once humans know the truth, we can finally be... Free at last! Free at last! Thank God Almighty! We are free at last! Now that you guys know what reincarnation really is, click on part 2 for a step-by-step -step guide on exactly how to exit the reincarnation trap. But that's all for now. I hope you guys found this helpful. Remember your power, use discernment, and remember the truth doesn't change just because you don't believe it.